I've got you under my skin. It has been a long time since there's been this much action during a select board race in Bennington. Bob was a good journalist. Uh, he was honest. He was very fair, and he, however, he stuck to his guns. He was unwilling to back down when he thought he was right. Seven candidates, including two incumbents, had stepped forward to make a run for the three open seats on the board. He did everything: ad sales, the production of the commercials, among other programs on the on the station. He did all the news gathering and research. He did the on-air news, of course. 7.30 in the morning and 12.30 in the afternoon. Plus newcomers to elective office races, Joe Krawczyk, Jamie Jerome, Al Nault, Thomas Panfiglioli, and James Gully. And when we turn on the radio, we'll think of him also, and it's certainly a tribute to him and to the community that WBTN is back on the air. One sad note in all this, of course, is the absence of one name, a name of the current chairperson of the Bennington Select Board, Lodi Calvin, who has decided not to run for re-election to the board this year. First time I met him, I was a Cub Scout. None of the candidates were in favor of turning the rail bed between Bennington and North Bennington into a bike path, opting to leave it open for possible railroad use later, saying that the bike path should follow the river. He was everywhere. I don't know how long his, his day lasted, but it had to be uh, on a good day. He probably went 12 hours. If things were tough and it was an election night or something, he probably went longer. In all, we have seven strong candidates for three slots on the select board in Bennington. He always was right down the middle, very fair. He was a, he was a good man. Our job is to choose whom we think can be the most effective, three of them. Tom Harrington uh, truly was the voice of Bennington. It's an interesting and exciting race, and all we have to do is vote. So let's do it, and let's make it a big one. I always felt like the news could be bad, but the reporting never was. Roadblocks, speed bumps, frost thieves, whatever you call them, they've been the bane of the troubled middle school project for the Mount Anthony School District for too many years now. When he spoke... He could be trusted. A committee of citizens, ordinary taxpayers, not educators, or anyone who might have a vested interest in the middle school except to further the educational needs of the area. For a man who was, who had so many words and was responsible for so many words behind the mic, he was a man of so few words when the mic wasn't on. I've been at this task for some 12 or 13 years now to put together a plan for the best, a school to last 100 years and one which will offer the best education for the area middle schoolers and make this area proud not only of a first-class high school, a firehouse, police station, health care facility, but of a well-designed and needed middle school. Pretty much in that voice that only Bob will, will be known for said, uh, okay, kid, you're hired, here's the right card, go to, go to Manchester. The protesters that would oppose the proposal just won't quit. They're bound and determined to defeat this project one way or the other. Perhaps what made Bob so special was the fact that he never saw himself that way. After all, all he did was, quote, get up and go to work every day like a lot of other people, end quote. And because of this defeatism and roadblock genera, the state Senate Institutions Committee, led by Senator Vincent Aluzzi, has some serious questions. He has threatened to put restrictions or at least conditions in the school project. He will be missed. I miss him already. Let's hope he sees the wisdom of what has been accomplished on this end of the state and not listen too much to the constant critics. One Saturday morning as we were working together, I told him that I had something for him uh, for the party but wasn't able to read it. And I fully expected him to tell me he didn't want to hear it, especially if it was mushy. But he did something that totally surprised me. He listened to all of it, and then he told me how much he appreciated the way that I felt. Mike Bethel has just about done everything to stop this project he can, including at least one court case, and now threatens another one. And that's what I'll remember the most about Bob, how he would always go the extra mile for someone else. But I've heard no outcry from either of the communities for a revote of a complaint against the first vote a few years ago. Did the tape and uh, put it on the air and said to himself, this guy's never going to win. He threw the tape away, and that person turned out to be Jimmy Carter. Next, Bethel cannot see that if the Bennington 6th grade does not go to the middle school when constructed, then there has to be some construction in the Bennington school district to handle the overcrowding. And it was so bad that he let him redo it. And I said, well, Bob, why did you do that? And he says, no, I would have done the same for you. So while we warehouse the students in this perpendicular shoebox construction, we lose more parking and playground space. The whole idea is ludicrous. Uh, we would be serious together and we would have great laughs together. And I think all of us here in Vermont have 
lost a very good friend. I just hope that the commission rules in the Mount Anthony's favor that the institutions committee approves the plan as is. If it hadn't been for his strong ties to the Bennington region, I believe Bob could have been a national figure within his profession. And as school board candidate Rick Pembroke said, I wish we could walk into that new school tomorrow or something like that. He was the old WBTN. Bob was an Iron Man at WBTN. Before those roadblocks, speed bumps and frost eaves turn into unmanageable potholes. And uh, Bob, uh, we miss you. We, we think the world of you and, and boy am I glad I had you as my best man. Let's get on with our new school. The protesters have already cost us more money than was necessary. Nevertheless, like everybody else in this community, this is pretty bad news for Bennington. Spring is nearly here and construction should be started soon. Dinner. Thoughts and prayers are with Bob and his family. Cause I've got you under my skin. We pray that is so. This is Bob Harrington.